If you've been learning a language for a while, but you still can't think in the language, you might be wondering why you can't think in a language. What are you doing wrong? In this video, I'm going to share five common reasons why you can't think in a language, what to do about it, and some resource recommendations to help solve the problem. If you're new here, hi! My name is Jamie, I'm a language coach, and my job is helping online language learners stick to their language learning long term by helping them find the right language learning strategy for them. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Wednesday. The first common reason why you can't think in a language is because you're learning the language through translating. Now this is really common, especially for Americans, because we learn to learn languages in school by taking a new vocabulary and translating between English and whatever foreign language it is. We're taught to do this so that it's easy to test our ability to basically study these vocabulary words, but it doesn't actually help for using the language and thinking in the language. In reality, in like real life scenarios, this situation is best for translating, and that's really about it. In fact, one of the big things that I teach my clients is to never learn vocabulary with translation unless you are specifically trying to be a translator. So if you want to avoid learning vocabulary by translating it into your native language, what do you do instead? Picture association. The basic idea behind this is you see a picture of something instead of the word, instead of the English word. So for example, if you're learning the word for milk, if you're learning it in Spanish and you're learning the word leche. Instead of learning leche as a translation as milk, instead you might want to have a picture of milk and use that to think of the word leche. This way you're not learning the word leche as a translation of an English word, you're using it as the meaning of an object that you already know how to refer to. This strategy is basically the entire premise behind the Fluent Forever app, so you might want to check that out if you're looking for more picture association. Or if you're not really into Fluent Forever, you can try Rosetta Stone or you can try Utalk. If you go in the description below, you can find links to my reviews of all these language apps and every Every other resource I'm going to recommend in this video. So definitely check out those reviews to learn more. The second reason why you can't think in the language you're learning is because you're spending too much time playing highly gamified like tap 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 apps without actually internalizing the language. Now there's, I'm not saying that those apps are wrong or bad or whatever it is, they definitely have their place. However, if you depend on them too much, it does create this problem where you can't actually internalize the language or use the language. You know what I'm talking about? If you spent a lot of time on Duolingo specifically, and you, you still can't think of the language, this is a big reason why. If that really hits the nail on the head for you, I have a whole other video really going in depth into what's going on and some specific resources, but the one that I highly recommend for this particular problem is Yask. And again, in that video, I definitely really go really hard into Yask, why I love it for this, and a, a couple of other resource recommendations that could help with this. But the basic idea is that you don't wanna be just kind of half paying attention, half playing a game. You also want to be able to create the language. You want to be prompted to use a language and take the vocabulary, take the grammar that you already have in your brain and learn to use it. This could be in speaking form, this could be in written form, this could be a whole bunch of different things. Um, Definitely check that video out because it, it's gonna help you if this is what you're struggling with. The third common reason why you can't think in a language is because you're giving up when it's too hard. And I don't mean this in like a condescending, patronizing way. Um, a lot of people are surprised when language learning becomes a challenge. And that's why they get sucked into using easier apps like Duolingo, for example. Thing is, no matter what strategy, no matter what resources, no matter what approach, no matter where you are in your language learning, it's gonna be difficult sometimes. That's just, that's just a fact of life. It can be too difficult to the point where you're like making things too difficult for yourself, or it could just be a small challenge that you need to be willing to work through. And whichever one of those it is, is completely up to you and it's up to you to figure out in yourself. But if it's too difficult for you to move past and I know that saying like, oh, just, you know, work through it and you can do it and hustle is not helpful and that's why I generally don't recommend that. My suggestion for this is to make your studies, your practice, whatever it is, make the challenge smaller and easier to deal with. This could mean using easier vocabulary. This could mean 
committing to five minutes instead of 20 minutes. This could mean a number of different things, but if the problem is that it's too difficult for you to conquer, make it smaller, break it down, make it less overwhelming. How well can you think in the language that you're learning? Let me know in the comment section below. The fourth possible reason why you can't think in a language is because you're not getting enough input. Now there are huge debates about this. A lot of people really passionately believe that you should just do input first all the time, which means listening to music, reading, like consuming the language. And there's another half of the internet who is really passionate and really convinced that it's output first. Like you need to be speaking and writing and using, using the language from day one before you get any input. Honestly, that doesn't really matter. It's totally up to you. And if anybody tells you that one way or the other is wrong or better, don't listen to them. There are no rules for this thing. But where this point is concerned, if you're not learning how to understand the language, you're not gonna be able to think in it. If your brain doesn't know how to comprehend the language that's around you, it's not going to be able to think in that language. This could mean listening to music, watching TV, whatever it is that you like to do. And there are a ton of different options for this. Again, I have other videos that can help you with this. But off the top of my head, there's Yabla and LingoPie. Those are both resources that you can use to find um, TV shows and clips and things like that to help boost your input and help your understanding so that you can start building those pathways for your brain to actually understand what's going on. And that's a good segue to the fifth possible reason why you can't think in a language is because you're not getting enough output. As I mentioned, th there is no right or wrong for if you do more input or output, if you do input first or output first or whatever it is, but you do have to have a certain amount of both if you want to be able to think in the language. Output specifically is important because if you are not genuinely trying to create the language in your brain and have a conversation or write things down or how, however it is that you want to use the language, you're not gonna be able to think in the language. Unless you basically intentionally created thoughts, you're not gonna be able to create thoughts easily, more naturally, more fluently. So to fix that problem, you gotta get more output. You gotta be speaking more, you gotta be talking out loud more, you gotta be writing things down, whatever it is. And just like the last point about input, output, there, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. For example, Speechling is really good about this because with Speechling you have prompts, you have pictures, you have just phrases you can say, and it's all about speaking, 100% about speaking the language in really short clips, like short, like, five to 10 seconds, up to like 60 seconds. I don't remember what the free speak version does, how, how long that is where you like, you have a picture or something and then you're led to describe the picture or you have a sentence and you're like a question and you're led to answer the question verbally and record it. All super great options and ways to solve this problem. Not being able to think in a language is one of many, 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 many super common problems that language learners tend to experience. And just like all the other common problems that language learners experience, this one can be totally avoidable if you know how. And that is exactly why I teach my coaching clients to be intentional and smart and educated about their language learning approach so that they know exactly what they need to do in order to achieve the goals that they're looking for. So if you wanna learn more about my 90 day self-paced coaching program called The Method, click the link below in the description box. And if you like this video, check out these videos next. Otherwise have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Dance guys. There. Finally.